It has been an enormous undertaking here with our second character, the elusive, the terrifying, and the downright downtrodden Elrong. But here we are, my friends. Victory is at hand. But sadly, of course, with every victory comes loss. And in this case, come has been lost. He's a eunuch now. Uh, having been... Uh, what, do we, what should we call it? Medicated? Operated on by his ex-wife, Arwenia, who, after uh, after Elrong found out she was having an affair, she very conveniently performed a life-saving operation on him that resulted in him becoming a eunuch. Maybe as a suspicious man, he might view that as uh, an intentional ploy by her, and that's exactly what we did. She is now imprisoned and divorced, awaiting her torture, because for a lustful, stubborn man... There could be no greater loss in life than becoming a eunuch. No, no amount of conquest, no amount of world domination or realm building or, or, or rebuilding the realm, of course, of Tharthathathi Tharth, that almost fell apart yesterday. No amount of that will ever make up for his biggest loss yet. Forget about his daughter, his magic, mighty, powerful daughter. This is far, far worse, my friends. Yeah, however, amid all the strife, struggle, and betrayal, both penile and otherwise, we've acquired... An entire kingdom, my friends. Uh, effectively, an entire kingdom, of course. The uh, Duchy of Brittany, who we're called the Duchy of Powers. Hang on, did he create the Duchy of Brittany or what? Yeah, so Tharth the Tharthy made the Duchy of Brittany and granted it to us. Why are we still called Powers? Because we were uh, our duke when we began, right? Let's swap over to that. Let's make that our primary title, just to help clear up a little confusion there. What do we need to make the kingdom? Nothing. We can just make it straight off the bat here. How interesting that would of course give us a royal court and all sorts of fancy things now i should point out before we dive too far into today's episode i'm recording this episode earlier than usual rim rim offset it's caused a total mess in real life along with me being very very busy so i'm trying to get back on a a good schedule here so i haven't seen any of your sagely advice i'll keep things very low to the ground very low intensity today we're gonna build up this realm and build up our guy he's only 65 he's not even halfway through his life yet he's not like the equivalent of a, a 20 year old in base game crusader kings 3 he's already achieved an enormous amount being the first continental elf so why not ascend him to heights that i think at this point he's earned and deserves it was a massive struggle early on oh that crown is doing no favors with that hair Oh dear, my friend, what were you thinking with that? Well, obviously, it was an enormous struggle early on. We played as a single county duke who'd had all of his land stolen by other family members, other more enterprising, charismatic, and warfare-driven family members, but through plotting and scheming and beguiling, he's worked his way back up, and I'm happy to see that. However, uh, we've got a slight issue, I think, that West France and Aquitaine are right on our borders. The time of the Holy Wars has already begun. We have the King of Aquitaine's son in prison, which I think is a nice insurance play, for sure. And I think the major concern is the King of West France here. Should he die right now, his heir, the King of Aquitaine, takes everything back and might not be so happy about us having his son prisoner. We need a bigger insurance play. Uh, really, what we're hoping for, of course, is the King of West Francia marries someone and has more kids. Now, this could be interesting. Uh, what if we give him an offer he could not refuse? He won't accept that. That could be an interesting way to play diplomacy characters. I don't like playing diplomacy characters because I think they're very shallow. They do the same thing all the time. Um, I mean, obviously, you can say that's true of warfare and, and intrigue and blah, blah, blah. But diplomacy characters are the least interesting. You'll sit and you're waiting for plots to fire, friendships to form alliances, marriages, that type of thing. It, it doesn't do anything for me personally as a player. But the idea of playing a diplomat that's able to marry kings, maybe make their wives disappear, of course, marry kings, ensure they have elf-blooded children ascending to the throne... Maybe elf-blooded children that may end up flipping religions and cultures and that type of thing. That could be a way to play a diplomat. We'll keep that in mind in the future. Um, right, do not ever, ever ransom this kid. We need to keep him there. We need to really just build up what we've got for now. I can't really see an inroad into France here. We could kidnap his daughter, but she's a duchess. We've got the Duchy of Luxembourg. She's a duchess and we've still got 85%. Ah, well, that's something. So simply, we build up our control, both by building control, com uh, converting culture, and obviously converting religion. And then I think we would just be a good ruler for our realm. Why can't we hold court? Because we're still very unwell with consumption. That's quite annoying. We don't quite have the money that uh, Tharthathathi Tharthi had. We can have an administrative court or a scholarly court. Administrative reduces construction time. I increase promoting cultural acceptance. Hello. Develop realm growth in capital and vassal tax or scholarly contribute. Uh, sorry, sorry, scholarly 
Scholarly Court. That was hard to say. Inspired characters arrive more frequently. Guest opinion is higher. Lifestyle experience up by 10%. I do like that one, but honestly, I think administrative is better right now when we're trying to build a RAM. Of course, high haven't been our language. I think we can afford... I think we can definitely afford to spend a little bit of money on our amenities here. Currently, we're going from no cost up to 1.6. Honestly, if we can just get it to grandeur level 4, that's all I'm really concerned about. So let's at least spend a bit of cash here. Outmoded, fashion, modest food, etc., etc. Then when we've got the control in place, the cultural benefits, that one will start making more tax. And then, of course, we can move on from there. I think that's a good start. Can't change it for a little while, but obviously we've got to wait a little while for everything to stabilize anyway. It, my man has a load of perks to spend. Wowie. Ah. Uh, siege perks against group revolts 50%. That could be relevant right now. But similarly, controlled territory defender advantage from Holy Wards, I think, is also quite good. Um, Vassals. Vassals aren't super relevant, are they? What do you think? How about we go into Architect? Maybe build some... Ah, maybe build some elven things. Diplomacy, stewardship, vassal opinion, plague resistance. I don't know how useful... How useful being an administrator is unless we expand the realm out further. We can administrate everything we ourselves have quite comfortably though, right? Let's go for the cost on... Let's go for the cost on building then. Maybe a better idea might be flip over to uh, leadership lifestyle. And then we go for cosmopolitan. We go for founder. Because popular opinion, it gives the stewardship. I think these actually might be more useful now that we've actually kind of landed and we're in place, huh? Well, either way, um, retreat losses I could get behind. Because, of course, that will help out with raiding. Which, of course, we're still going to be doing here. Rally call for levy size just to get a, a sizable bands of raiders. Ugh, let's go tactical retreat then. Ah... I arrived back in my castle after a long, lonely walk. Another year passed, another year older. I was born on this day 66 years ago, and the older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I've cultivated over the years. So it saddens me I'm not heard from my wife, Valoria, or any of my friends. I trudge along to my chambers, loneliness impeding my lazy feet when I hear a clang and hus hushed whispers. What could that be at this hour? It, my friends. Here's a birthday party. It's Thartha Tharthi and Failmere. Failmere was the begotten son of the only begotten daughter, ignoring the other children. He's that incredible child, the, the child that we, of course, have landed. Beautiful, genius, Herculean, sagacious, and all of these other absolutely insane traits going for him. I can't believe they both turned up. That's so nice. My friend Thartha Tharthi approaches me, struggling to carry through beautifully wrapped packages. Ever the trickster, he says, I've got three gifts here. One shall be yours. Which will it be? Well, um... Oops, forget about that a second. What do we have? We can take the small gift. Yeah, let's take the small gift. Let's see what we've got. A brooch. King Elrong's brooch. Attraction, opinion, and prestige. That's nice. A little bit sad, but nice, I suppose. Can't do much with the attraction opinion these days, can we? Ah, and the indoctrination task in Leon is already finished. Let's get blasting out there, then. Beautiful. So these are already... Hold on, let's just quickly check the cultural and... So we're pretty much all Alaran culture right through the middle of our domain there. Elven is going to expand out from the capital. That's absolutely fine. I thought she also converted culture. Oh, no, that's a random event that can happen. That's a possible side effect. Right, okay, so I'm actually glad that we stuck with the promote culture activity. That's good. Really, sadly, we can't do anything until we lose consumption. We can't, we can't hold feasts. We can't hold court. We can't do so much stuff until this is resolved. So I guess we're just going to... Quite literally sit here and wait. Too late for caution. What do we think? We we send it? This guy's had consumption for ages now. Like, probably well over a year. How, well, when did he become the king of... Sorry, when did he get the Duchy of Brittany? Because it was slightly before that. So he's had consumption now for around two years. Is it too late for caution? Is he? Well, last time he trusted someone to do that, he lost his cock and balls. Let's not do that. I know that that's, <laughs> I know that's not what a eunuch is. Do no more than uh, what is necessary, please. Reduce disease symptoms, but still not getting rid of the disease itself, for God's sake. Ah, now we I said we should exchange hostages more, especially now that we're a king. We get a lot of prestige for it. Welcome. Uh, it's Elendar, Threk's son, right? Or Threk's grandson, I believe. Welcome. Oh, my grandson. Duke Threk is a firm your pack. Sorry, I'm confusing my children here. Right, there's the hostage that we're getting from Threk. That's right, it's, it's Threk's granddaughter. Hello. The pact is in place. There we go. We could propose a few more of those, I think. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. 
Oh, we can finally play the game. Time to conquer the world. Yeah, something like that. I grew gaunt and coughed and bled. I thought I would waste away to nothing, but it certainly felt that way when I could barely climb out of bed. Yet my health and my strength has recovered. Ever so slowly, finally I'm able to face the world and all of its challenges. We lose the traits. Consumption. We can finally hold court in his very fetching slippers, if not poorly fitting slippers. Gesture for the first in line to approach. Anything that will help this realm Find a bit of cohesion, and by cohesion, of course, I mean convert to Alvin. What's going on with your face? A peasant man stands before me, informing the court of his plea. The recent war took a toll on the countryside. They looted an important cultural site to us Bretons. No. Absolutely not. No Bretons. No, thank you. Darth Darth, he might be more willing, because he was a bit of a spread thrift and a kinder man. Absolutely not. A haggard-looking peasant stands in front of me. My lord, I beg you for help. A monster prowls in the forest, killing cattle and farmers alike. Send your strongest hunters. Ah. Uh, well, he is a hunter. Yes. I shall fell the beast myself. My lord, my son, Elgas, takes the floor. I have an idea to improve taxation. Absolutely proceed with the survey, my son. We've got. I feel like this guy's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a meritocracy. Just take one glance at his council. And you shall see that for yourself. They're almost all his bloody family members. In fact, I think they're all his direct children. Your son, your son, your son, your daughter. Meritocracy is definitely the right word. Or maybe a little a bit of an oligarchy too, I suppose. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Um. Well, we could have the feast. I don't think it's entirely necessary. What about an expedition? Is, are there any nearby? There's one in our domain. Ah. The Spire Citadel, a marvelous spiraling tower visible for miles. Once a march to a legendary oracle, her incredible foresight was greatly enhanced by her treasured Palantir and was caused for both respect and feared by local population. Could we, bear in mind, hear me out here, bear in mind when we did that quest to wherever it was up here in Iceland, it unlocked a building slot. We could build a special building. Would that possibly also be the case with, uh, we might want to make Rohan our capital, build a special unique building there. Follow in the footsteps of the great Fatha Tharthi and launch an expedition. I think we've got to do it, haven't we? Especially given that we chose that cultural tenant to benefit our decisions. Let's get out there. It's going to be a bit more of a chill. Again, more of a chill time today. We did a lot of warfare. Lots of scheming, plotting, murdering, kidnapping, etc, etc, etc. Listen, we do not need somebody to escort us through our domain. How offensive. We need 297 gold. Okay, it could be a little while. Or... Maybe France is still at war and they've blown all their men against Aquitaine, you say. Ah. Oh, shit. Yes. No, sorry. Let's um, go ahead and move that rally point back, if you don't mind. Ooh, this is the monster. As the preparations complete, I step out with a selected group of guards to face the infamous monster that is terrorizing Ren René. It doesn't take us long to find it. A clear trail of blood leads us straight to the creature's abode. A massive boar stands in front of me. This could kill him. However, with the Hunter trait 40 prowess Herculean, he'll probably be fine. 100% chance. Oh, look at that. You saw to the monster. We gain monster killed for five years. Development growth 10%, popular opinion 15, danger bonus 10. That's sick. 350 prestige and some more Hunter. And we're already level one of Venator. It's no real surprise that we're going to be able to handle this. 100% chance. I think that's, normally it's like 99% and 0, 0 if there's a rounding error. This is guaranteed. Beautiful. Not even a slight decimal chance of dying there. What a boy. All that hunting actually did pay off. And now we're off to hunt the greatest game of all. The French. <laughs> we have more raiders than their entire army. Even if their army was up full health and ready to go. Prince Escalamond of West Francia. Ah, she's the one that we're trying to kidnap. Beautiful. Target is talking to our agent. That's what we like to see. And a chart of our dynasty. You're granting your daughter. Is this the bloodline plot? It is the bloodline plot. The horrifying bloodline blending where we married son to daughter. Sorry, son to mother. Or maybe son to daughter, depending on how it goes. Son to mother to try and forward these two bloodlines. Again, maybe they cannot be inherited into the same character. They've named it Elf Capone. And you will show me genius, attractive. Sorry, genius, beautiful, Herculean with both bloodlines. Show me. Damn it. Although, I will say that wasn't far off, was it? <laughs> oh no, this character is just insanely good instead of literally perfect. Um, may you grow stronger. I wasn't an elf. Sorry, wasn't a high elf, just a regular elf. Elf Capone. Great name for that child. Um, explore the planes yourself. Absolutely. I feel like, well, obviously we don't need to do it. We're 85% success chance. Ooh, we stole a spear. My spear now. Alagast has completed the land survey. 
Vassal tax contribution, 5%. Oh, well, that's going to help out. Uh, not at all, because we've only got one vassal. I mean, technically, it will help out a very tiny, slightly amount. Man, I love having borders with people we can directly raid. This is really making life a lot easier, isn't it? We're missed over here that's making us take... Oh, whatever. That's fine. We'll just take the attrition. That's not too bad. To raid or to trade? Um, you pillage and refuse to think about raiding for the rest of your life. It's a time on tradition. Passed down from his grandfather to his father. We've got the same crown. That's awkward. They've been wearing the same thing. Um, maybe he'll just give us the money and we can move on? Absolutely not. Ah, there's also a possibility we could get a truce with him. Now, that is very, very, very powerful. Is he at a risk of being deposed? Because that will cut all of our raiding targets down. That will basically destroy our raiding target. He's defending and winning. A truce with the king could be valuable. You're right. Let's try it. Your offer is accepted. Well, only 85 gold? That your palace is destroyed. Because I hold none of it's to your land. Uh, do I not? That you've gwitted. Oh, that's a good point. Why were we the Duke of Palace? <laughs> I never considered that before. Huh. Duke of Palace. I mean, that was, the, that was the, the duchy that we did have that we were then slapped down by our by our lovely our lovely brothers. Thank you. Um, Princess Scalamon becomes my prisoner. There's your truce right there. Forgive me. I am just ensuring that you are a man of your word, of course. A son from one king, a daughter from the other. I think that works very well, thank you. And of course, we can still raid into Aquitaine, so it's not the end of the world, is it? Far from it. Look at the prestige we're getting. This is, this is, this is it. We're going now. Awenia, my great-granddaughter. She's okay. It seems like the bloodline is... Oh dear, yeah. No, this girl was not very good. She has definitely diluted the bloodline somewhat there, hasn't she? dangerous, but I think we can probably handle it. If we run now, what kind of person would we be? Oh dear. Artifact Claymore. Decline. No, thank you. Well, we got our ass clap there. We're still not quite in the right place to be raiding to that extent, I don't think. Ah! Oh, a beautiful book. It's got a... No, those Tommy's come across a copy of a lapidary. A treatise on the properties and qualities of various stones, gems, and minerals. Hello. What do we get for that? Stewardship. Learning. Monthly lifestyle experience. Beautiful. Yes, please. Another county down. Thank you, madam. That's almost all of it. Look, we've got one county left to go, and then it's all just cultural stuff. It's kind of hoping we get that event fire that converted it, but that's okay. She's just too good. She's just too quick at converting them, right? So final one then down in Nantes. How are we looking? That's going to take you 21 months. That's actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. What is this? Sorry? I call on you, or I'll... I, I mean, I know what it is. I can see that. It says a holy war for the kingdom of England. However, it's... This guy up in the Scottish Isles? What have you got in it? Have you... Oh, he's got North... That's right, Cumberland. Right. Yes. No, obviously we'll help you. I mean, obviously I'm not going to go over there and help him. We've got, we've got, you know, we're on a separate continent now. We're, we're a whole league away. Now we can actually get around to stationing some of our troops. Oh, they're all, they're all exactly the same. And then you can be thrown in there. Then going forward, the prestige, like I said, we'll start dropping it on the wolf riders, baiting the enemy to attack us so that we can grab people as prisoners to ransom now. It worked out super, super well with Tharthathathi. Tharthi. Speaking of which, uh, who have we got in here? Anybody relevant to my hopes and dreams? We've got two that obviously we could ransom out for a, a kingdom's fortune that I think I'd rather keep. Thank you. I'm all right with that. Can I throw out some curveballs here? Why don't we... I was going to say, where's the, the capital's in Bourbon. I don't know why it's not in Paris anymore, but there we are. Um, why don't we, then, send you to just go undermine in Bordeaux? Because what's the alternative? You stay at home, you do magistration. Give you some extra piety. Allure and theocratic rulers' opinion is increased. Recruit new magi, potentially. Convert your subjects. Not relevant. Increase vassal opinion. Not relevant. Okay, I think I like that. I think we're just going to make sure that our... Neighboring realms are sufficiently clappied. He's going to war with Denmark. Why? What for? For Ireland? Wow, he really is just pushing the borders out. Look at him go. Oh, my beautiful boy. He's done so more than I ever dreamed he would. How old is he now? 131. He's still going to live for a long time, I think. New stewardship perk as well. Centralization is good. I like that one. Defensive measures is quite nice too. Domain limit plus two means that we could always... Uh, build some baronies. So maybe we go down architect. I'm not worried about obviously vassal levies. Don't care about tyranny. Don't care about vassals joining independence factions because we don't have any. Don't care about that. 
Administrator would be nice to get, but is it worth going through effectively three dead picks for it? This isn't right. So I think I think maybe we do go down through to Architect, and then at some point we'll flip over to here as well. Speaking of which, Unity through Diversity. Reduce time for Promote Cultural Acceptance. Promote Cultural Acceptance is not what we want, though. So I'm not really so concerned about that. Negotiate Trade Agreement. Interesting. We could take a peek. Chance of inheriting good congenital traits, bad congenital traits. Again, I think that's only for our particular character. Declare as heir could be good because then we could declare the... Uh, who, who's our current heir then? Elrond II. Don't get me wrong. He's certainly not bad, but he is... I, I mean, genetically, he's fine. But who is he married to here? Elf blood. That's, a, that's a, basically a human lady. On the plus side, the kids are doing... The, the kids are elven, so that's fine. Oh... Now that's interesting. One of the possible traits that you can pick from Architect's ancestry is Albino. And quite frequently, the AI will pick that because the AI is uh, insane. Hold on. If there are a lot of Falcon Handers with this, oh god. It's very possible that that's what he chose. Suddenly, we've got so many Albino Falcon Handers. That kid has had a hard life. God knows what's going on there, but you're sick. What, 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 oh, you're, you are Tharth of Tharthi's son. Tharth of Tharthi. Oh, dear. What have you done? Is that Feasnor? The Prince of Fashion. What happened to you, my boy? And what happened to your wife? This is... I think he may have fucked us. Natural dread increase. General opinion, minus 10. I actually don't hate that. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't dislike it as a trait at all. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad. General opinion, minus 10. Doesn't matter. Because the whole dynasty, the whole realm are related, and that's going to spread through the dynasty. Before you know it, all the elves, al albinoism and, and, and elvenism will be uh, indivisible, I think. Oh my god, look at this child. Beautiful Amazonian genius high elf. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, isn't it? What have we got in our situation? We can't do much. We can't go to war because we're... Uh, sorry, we can't go ready because we're at war. Boar sighting we could go and do something with, I suppose. Potential alliance negotiation. Not employing a wet nurse. Yeah, we can we can deal with that one. Can declare war. What have we got against Aquitaine? Oh, holy war, Aquitaine. Oh. Well, I mean... We can only attempt one holy war against the kingdom tier title per lifetime. Did I use it... Did I use the duchy conquest before? I guess I must have because we had to make the kingdom tier title afterwards. Could you imagine... Oh, or, or we wait for West Francia or Aquitaine to fall back under the other one and then we go to war. Because I think we can, we can declare out beyond our borders, can't we, and take extra stuff as we go. Who? All titles held by Catholic rulers are seized within the target title. Okay, that's annoying. That's not a problem, though. I mean, shit, take all of Aquitaine? That would be a hell of a flex, wouldn't it? The Elven Cosines. Ah, oh, and there he is, the man of the hour, Count Failmere. He's announced an usher in before me. He kneels in deference, offering nothing but his oath to serve as a vassal of the kingdom. Thank you, I appreciate that. He gained 75 prestige. We gained 75 prestige. Three court grandeur, 50 opinion. Hope this war ends soon so that we can go and do something. Ah, Bordeaux has converted. A beautiful work. This is so silly. And what happens if we just get a claim if we let it go through? We don't need a claim. I think it's much more valuable to just keep plowing on and converting them from within just really keep them on their toes do you think we go for like the capital of france next that's interesting this is such a weird way to play it but i'm actually a massive fan if we just keep hitting them like this count failmail demands a position on the council as a powerful vassal i mean he could go basically anywhere he's bloody great uh i think we swap out our Counselor, sorry, Arathorn, but you're just nowhere near as good. A much better guy, a much better job. Uh, prestige 1.1 per month. Wowee. It's going to help get us out of this prestige hole a little bit. Oh, hello. You cannot find a reason to keep your grandson as an Albanite hostage any longer. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. Loses prestige and renown. Fine. Um, let's demand a payment from our cousin. It's a strong hook, so we might as well keep going for that. And then I guess, without much else to do while we're at war here, are we even allowed to go on a hunt while we're at war? We can, right? You, you can do that because when you are... Because when, you, when you're, like, on your way to a thing and if war breaks out, you can say, I can handle it. And you could just carry on. So it wouldn't make sense if they wouldn't let you do this otherwise. I think I would like to slay the beast. 
The hunt is about to begin, and I'm yet to name a master of the hunt. Robbie is eager to prove herself. She is also a hunter. Elrong... <sighs> Robbie, then. <laughs> Robbie is the best candidate. Yes, you're very right. She absolutely deserves the position there. 80% success chance. We haven't chosen what to actually hunt yet, but, I mean, he's so good. This might solidify his hunter role. Get us up to... What, what, is, what is the benefit from level 2 if we upgrade that? Whoa. Uh, plus 1 lightning, plus 2 prowess. Stress loss plus 10%. A smaller health boost. It's the same as what we get anyway. We got a little bit more prowess and a little bit more stress loss. That's worth doing by itself. We will seek the boar. Absolutely, we will. Dangerous and impressive. How do you get the level 5 one? That's if you get the, the sighting, right? The rare sighting for like the white heart, the white boar, or whatever it happens to be. Good. The, Lee, the, the war with King Gandalf is over. I presume he's just grabbed a shitload of Ireland with that. Um, yep, absolutely he has. Wowie. What a bloody mess. And I'm hoping this other war ends soon so that we can actually get back to whatever the hell it was we were doing. Get back on your horse. Slightly increased. Yes, absolutely. You're embarrassing him. This is his one activity that he actually enjoys doing. What about the boar? Getting stressed because he's lustful. How lustful could a man be these days? The boar. He has to refocus his efforts. Oh, we found it. After it, we ride. Success chance increases. More perilous. Yes, go. Boom. Get that boar. Capped at 80% success chance. Really? It's gone. Ah. Oh. With an 80% success chance. Ridiculous. We lose adventure for now. We lose a lot of stress. We gain a lot of prestige from that, though. Wowie. And that's going right into my wolf riders, very appropriately. Melanthia has been trailing us around uh, Chateaubriand for hours. And though she swallowed her pride and asked for direction, she does not appear to be an expert Brythonic speaker. Let me try. He did live in Wales for a long time, so you presume he's got something going for him there. There you go. Somebody's run away. Uh, my caravan master has run away, in fact. No, she's got the bloodline. I need her back. Mount a search party for it. No, find them myself. <sighs> Go and he wouldn't risk being ill again. I feel like that would have a that would have an impact on him, you know. She's nowhere to be found. Well, she's back at the she's back at the city. There you go. She must have just got lost for a little while. Ah, the county of Bourbon changes to Alaran Weavers. All sorts of chaos on the continent. This is what I love. Where are we going to throw you next then? Uh, hold on. Just being this agent of chaos, this undermining, scheming man who's taking power by any means necessary without giving a shit what people think. What a guy. What a guy. I love this fella. Uh, let's go. I could even have you finding secrets. I'm not doing any schemes right now, to be honest. We've got so many hooks. The money's coming in thick and fast. We could do with a bit more cash, I suppose, though. So we'll keep you in court. Um, you're promoting culture. Please, my friend, by all means, head up there. What do we want to send you next? I guess we could go for the Isle de France. Paris to the to the rest of us. Let's go undermine that there then, please. And let's go to scheming. The best part about scheming against these guys, fabricating hooks against these guys, is now we can cash out on it without any worry that they're going to do anything dangerous. We're also going to kneecap their heirs enormously by keeping them in our prison for so long. We could torture them. They are just human. Everybody knows. Listen, when, when humans scream when you torture them, that's just air escaping from their shells. They're not actually in pain. They, they, some elven scholars say that humans don't even feel pain. I apparently can't torture this 13-year-old girl. Fair enough. Uh, you, though, are old enough to be tortured. Kapow. Uh, Arwenia, of course. Uh, there is no greater torture we can inflict on you than what you've inflicted on him. Dark insights of prowess. Beautiful. Um, Athel Gifu, is she an elf? She is. She's, she is an elf. Okay, not you then. Elorian Winterthorn. Get tortured. Don't know who he is. Random human. Why Why is he imprisoned? He's in house arrest. Oh, that was unnecessarily cruel. And then we've got this guy here. Again, don't remember who the hell he is. How long has he been? He's been in prison for 24 years. He could have done anything many years ago. And we would have absolutely no idea. Had to be done. Had to be done. You're right. It had to be done. 15% chance of them becoming a lunatic. And then Arwelia. We've got to make a loser mind. Arwenia. We've got to make a loser mind. What if we... Make her lose her mind, then we just let her out of prison and remarry her. <laughs> That's insane. That's the work of an insane man who's really lost their mind. Prince Edouard of Aquitaine, I'm afraid, <gasps> did become a lunatic. Now we kill the king of Aquitaine, they've got a lunatic man in charge. And who sweeps in to save the peasants from their tyrannical madman of a king? Elrong the Beguiling. Ah, that is big brain time. So if the king of France here falls down a... French flight of stairs, and then King Othon of Aquitaine goes for a swim. We get you in charge, the lunatic flagellant king, 
And then we just swoop in and save the day. You gotta admit. You gotta admit there's something quite sexy about that plan. Okay, hold on then. Uh, how's Failmeo doing? Because can I do anything else for him? What's it giving more domain? But we we don't have enough domain for our own benefits. I'll own his. So, um, we don't have the ability to build, and we're probably not going to have the ability to build any duchy buildings for a very, very, very long time. So let's save up the cash, and then let's go. That's right. Let's go back on that expedition. That's the thing I wanted to do, but we had consumption. As I think our final, our final fun task of the day. How are we going to pay for it? Well, I guess the. I guess the King of France can pay for it. What are you good at? Uh, genius, beautiful, hail. Uh, we accept only the best. Celestia, moon feather. Well, and preferably, like, relatives, too. Keep it keep it strong, after all. Um, so, by age, and just see who we've got hanging around here. No, age the other direction. <laughs> Alicia Falcahanda. Who are you? Granddaughter of Threk. Very good. She's genius, and that's what's important. Look, some of them still have the Thartha Tharthi overbite. Even after this many generations, they're starting to look a little, more, a little more normal. But you know they've got a lot of uncanny valley going on. Like, this guy looks abnormal, but not by elven standards. His wife, though, is a total mess. Oh, it's, it's Tharthi Tharthi's daughter. Well, that makes a lot of sense. What happened to Julia Melwood? <gasps> oh, no. She died at 130. She died of old age. She became incapable. Oh, God. So at some point, the stress really got to her, didn't it? Eccentric, drunkard, rackish, profligate, adulterer. C she had cancer and then she became incapable. Uh, she survived all that and died of old age. You've got to admit, that's fucking impressive for Julia Melwood. She was just a regular elf, whereas Tharthi Tharth is, of course, a high elf. If she's dying at 130, I can't even see his high elf trait. It's just like off the screen because he's got so bloody many at this point. He's, he's fulfilled like almost every one of the... Look at this. Overseer, visionary, cosmopolitan commander, hunter, sentinel, august. He went into the diplomacy tree. Vanguard, blade master, strategist, eager reveler, gallant. So he went into all the way down chivalry. I don't remember if we did that for him or not. What I, I wanted to know the difference between high elf and regular elf. So high elf is plus 50 years. Regular elf is plus 30. So we could see Thartha Tharthi for another 20 years or so quite comfortably. Oh, the war ended inconclusively. Beautiful. What actually happened? They died? Someone else grabbed the land? York grabbed it. Oh! Well, f f <laughs> he's so scary. Those two, I mean, the apple really didn't fall far from the tree there, did it? My god, he's like a clone of his father. Now we can go raiding, get a bit of cash, and then come back and do our... Oh, for god's sake, you are the traitor. No, we've already raised them as raiders, so we're good. Don't worry about that. Okay, that's good. That's good news. And then, uh, you, are we still allowed to raid, even if we're out war it's set to always raid first raiders it does say raiders okay i'm gonna trust you then we're gonna head down through to aquitaine how many troops have aquitaine got at this point 3800 so we still gotta be careful but again they've been distracted for a very long time we might be able to get away edward escaped honestly all part of the plan actually all part of the plan actually all part of the plan and i don't hate that at all so that's the army of aquitaine there well, they're not going to be able to do anything to us then, are they? We're just going to... I'm, I'm going to flagrantly walk by and raid their holdings. And there's not a damn thing they can do. During inspection of my realm, we arrived at a small river with a bridge over it. Several local officials specializing in engineering and surveying explain to me the various aspects of the bridge and the work <laughs> required to maintain it. It's amazing to think of all the work that goes into something simple like a bridge. Hey, that's new. And then everybody crosses it. You know? And a mysterious wooden chest. Oh, from CK2. Ah, oh, cool. I wonder if that is like a raiding event directly from CK2 then. We'll search for a locksmith later. You have a decision to unlock the mysterious chest. It's best you do it before you forget about it. So it will disappear after a while. Now in CK2, you found the, the chest and then you found the key later on, right? Lock the mysterious chest. Open sea same. You're in an army. We're also missing prestige. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna go, we're gonna get the prestige is sorted. Don't you worry. Ah, blackmail. Oh, there we are. That solved the money issues at the very least. Really, we're just writing for prestige more than cash at this point. Cash is, again, a very easy thing to come by. Let's head down to... Ah, and a blackmail hook on the King of France as well. Very nice. Head down to Cognac there. Probably go burn down that Bishop Frick. Ooh, my grandson and daughter. It's another chance at the Blended Bloodlines. Everan. <gasps> my God. Ha, ha, ha. Genius Herculean. Not, an, not a high of just a regular health. 
but bloodline of house valorith bloodline of house Cerulean, handsome and consecrated Erevan. maybe a character that we end up playing as i think might be someone we want to land and let manifest destiny the joint blood of two houses that could be fun let's get you people home then go on march march home march on dodge some armies if you see them but other than that 183 gold along with a little bit of oh bring it on oh yeah bring it on yeah very good 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 job peasant revolt thank you appreciate that that's that was absolutely a sigh up thank you appreciate that one and of course our gold back as well thank you thank you that one very very well happy with that shall we unlock the mysterious chest and we'll go on the expedition tomorrow instead because we're already overrunning today open sesame ah my lord he says the honor of opening this chest is all yours we're shaking hands i open the chest and it turns out there is nothing at all turns out the chest was empty save for a few rocks and apparently some sort of ancient scroll okay well maybe it'll lead us to some sort of glory and greatness and power and who knows what let's cash out on our fellas and then tomorrow tomorrow we're immediately going to go on that expedition and see what we can find how long are we allowed to play as this guy for he's from game start 119 we said we swap every uh, 70 years so i suppose we've got him for another another wait that can't be right Oh, yeah, no, another 20 years. No, that would make sense, right? We played, we slightly overplayed Tharth to Tharthy, so we'll play this guy up till, um, up to 140 years played, and then we'll jump to the next character and plow on from there. Thank you all for joining me here today in a bit of Crusader Kings 3. A glorious day, a happy day, a slow day, obviously. You know, we've completely converted the realm over, so that's pretty good. We converted the capitals of our enemies. We kidnapped their children. One how we've driven totally mad. And I would say overall, it was a pretty good time. The raiding is working perfectly fine. So now we can just keep getting the prestige, dump that into armies, etc., etc. And it's going to be all good. Thank you for joining me. Uh, no Patreon shout out again today because my lists are all off uh, off schedule because of RimWorld. So that will be coming back tomorrow when everything's nice and synced up. Until then, thank you to everybody. And thank you, Al Rong, you fucking strange man.